Hello, welcome to another Team Sense Tuesday webinar. My name is Caroline Rizzo, and I will be moderating today's discussion. Before I introduce our speakers, let's cover a few housekeeping items. As always, we encourage questions throughout the webinar. We just ask that you place them in the Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen, and we will make sure to get to all of your questions at the end of the webinar. Also, you may have noticed that we are recording the webinar today. So if you have to hop early or if you wanna revisit the content at a later date, no problem. We will be emailing out the recording via a YouTube link. And also you can always visit teamsense.com slash webinars. You can take a look at all of our previous content and then see what's upcoming for future webinars. All right, well, let's hop into it. We have a lot to cover today. So today's discussion is over the power of points. We're talking about implementing a points attendance policy. Super excited to have Sharon and Brittany joining us today to really talk through different points around point attendance systems. So let's hop into it and introduce ourselves. So as I mentioned, my name is Caroline. I'm the marketing manager here at TeamSense. Really my goal here with these webinars is introducing people to our webinar to talk about things that frankly I have a lot of questions about. So I'm excited to learn more about points attendance policies. And again, thank you ladies for joining us today. I'm based here in Austin, Texas, and I will introduce next my fellow Austinite. Welcome, Sharon. Yeah. Hey guys, I am Sharon Brenner. I am Team Sense's VP of product. Um, and secretly, if I could just do one thing all day, it would be talking to customers. So I'm really excited to be here chatting with Brittany today. Awesome. So good to have you, Sharon and Brittany. So great to have you here today joining us. Thanks again. Feel free to introduce yourself as well. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, I'm Brittany Passer. I'm the HR director at Western Sugar. Um, I've been with the company for just about a year and a half now and implementing a lot of technologies and things like that. I'm currently based out of the Denver office, uh, but regionally we're kind of north to south in this this area um, up to Montana as far as our business. Um, we are a sugar manufacturing business and are a relatively new client to TeamSense. Awesome. Well, again, thank you for joining us today. Super excited to really jump into it and hear more from your perspective today. So I want to set the stage. We're going to go off slides here. So again, it feels more conversational as always, but I want to kind of get a sense for really what a points attendance policy is. I know we have people here today that are HR managers that are probably familiar with what a point attendance policy is, but Sharon, if you don't mind just giving us a little bit of background on it, what organizations you typically see using points attendance policy, would love to learn more. Yeah, absolutely. So an attendance points policy is basically a system for managing employee absences. So a typical policy will assign different point values for tardiness, early departures, unscheduled absences, no call, no shows, which is all set at either the company level or the division level. Um, typically, we see a policy having different thresholds, so um, that will mean dis different disciplinary levels. So ranging from at the low end, things like a verbal warning or a conversation with your supervisor to written warnings. Um, to the final uh, threshold is usually grounds for termination. So um, usually um, these will be accumulated over time when employees have unexcused absences, and it's usually over a rolling 12-month period. Um, one of the reasons for a company to use a points policy that we hear from TeamSense customers is that it increases accountability and makes sure that everyone is being held to the same standards. So you don't have different supervisors with different policies that they're enforcing. You all have one policy across the company. Um, and we typically see this in larger organizations, but we've seen point policies that work for our customers that have as small as 50 people at a site. So really it can work for anyone in our verticals, which are manufacturing and logistics. That's awesome. Thanks for giving us kind of that whole overview from a high level perspective. It's interesting to kind of comparing the different sizes of companies as well, really the different mechanisms or reasons. Like you mentioned, I've talked with customers on these webinars and some have used them. Some feel like it's not right for their organization. So that's why we're here today to really talk about, hey, what works for you and maybe what would not work for you in this case. So Brittany, I want to kind of uh, jump into talking with you a little bit. So can you talk with us a little bit about how you've used a points policy at Western Sugar? Um, you know, where has it been implemented? 
I know you're relatively new to implementing it. So would love just to get your background on it. Yeah, of course. Um, so we've implemented points. Well, it's about a year now, actually. Um, we're going right, right around that mark of the year mark of being on a point system. We're kind of unique because we didn't implement it company wide. We um, have four factories and we work with three different unions. And so there are some attendants that we have negotiated into our contracts and some that we do not. So the ones that we do not, we have the ability to have a points policy in. Um, and so we did implement it in two of our factories in the north because it is not in our union contract. And so we are using it on that side. Um, I felt like, so Sharon talking about like the different points threshold, is it okay, Caroline, if I share my screen and just share Western Sugars just to get a visual, I think, with that? Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so just, I wanted to share um, Western Sugars points. We actually have a pretty thorough point program. I have seen a bunch of point programs across the board. There are very simple ones that are like four or five items type of thing but we really wanted something that was going to be black and white and, and exactly what Saren was saying. It's about accountability and very clear expectations. So we can hold everyone to this expectation and we don't have a lot of gray area. And if there is a gray moment, we really try to define that and then typically add on an addendum if we need to from this perspective. So just kind of looking through the like, the most of our points, we have an eight point system. Um, and so you'll see once you hit five points, there's different thresholds, of course, of that discipline up to and including the termination. So we are doing that in the North versus the South. Got it. This is super going on for days. So if you go. <laughs> yeah, I would say this is really helpful to see. I think it's great just to see an example to have it all laid out in this chart is really clear. And like you said, more black and white. Um, I think an interesting point that is unique to you as well is the fact that you have it at one location. You can kind of compare and contrast over a year of time of data, right? Now, at this point, we talked a little bit about data yep. and kind of getting nerdy about that. But I think that's what's cool is to see your learnings comparing across the different locations now that you've implemented it. So I think that's a good point is the impact. So I... I thought of this situation. So the, the two facilities, I reached out to one of the facility managers and I said, what do you like about the point system? And one of the things he really enjoyed is we have a lot of um, Fridays and Monday call-offs. So a lot of people are calling off to extend their weekend. It's a pretty normal thing. If you guys saw based off of their schedules that there are points associated with those. And so um, he's no longer having a Friday or a Monday where there's 10 to 13 people calling off at a time in his one factory. And we're during our, we're right in our inner campaign. So we are our smallest staffed right now as we can be. And we kind of wrap up going into September. Um, so 10 to 13 for a quarter of my population is pretty impactful when it comes to the maintenance side. So so then you look at our South term. So we've got a South, two South facilities and on May 6th, actually, and then I think a couple weeks later, we had a Monday where one facility had 13 one day and 10 the other. And that facility manager is calling our COO and calling me um, and they can't get what they need to done and the, the facility isn't, isn't staffed. And so you can really see the difference of what the point is, points are doing by forcing people to be accountable versus running into these huge staffing issues. So that was a huge change for us going into points. And we are trying to set up meetings to talk to the union as well as our union stewards in the South so that we can try to roll that points program out or something similar in the South, given that it has been so impactful. That's awesome to hear. Um, you talked a little bit about this, but are there any other challenges or pain points your organization was experiencing before implementing points, especially in the North? I think the biggest thing is people not showing up to work. There's not really there. Nobody was accountable. I think that I think the biggest challenge in any of these point systems is the human factor. Um, mm -hmm. I think even before the point system, we had like a, the contract has like a, it's not four points, but it's like four situation base and then you'd be terminated. Well, that's pretty small from that perspective. And then of course you have the human factor of someone going to a hospital or other situations like that. And so that now we're not really holding it tight. And so we just really had this loose policy. And then it was like, how can, 
when it comes to the union, like they can grieve stuff when we're not consistent and things like that. So it was really just a way to put some consistency around it and really just show showing up to work as a piece of our culture. Yeah, I love that. We we definitely hear that a lot that like it's the human factor versus like the consistency and getting those things into sort of a a system that you can account for most cases, but then you can have exceptions and like take away points if you if you need to and things like that. Um I'm curious since you've uh, implemented your attendance policy in the north, do you feel like there's been a cultural shift or there's been any major changes with the whole population? I do think as a whole, especially with us implementing TeamSense, um, we, I think it's holistically starting to start to shift the game. I think as a whole, we really, I've never worked for a company where you can have multiple no-call, no-shows. And I know in manufacturing, all of you listening have this type of thing where they can have like three or four of them. What world are we in that we can just not go to work? Like there's never been a job I thought I had that I could just not show up and they wouldn't fire me on day one. Um, And so really shifting that perspective of like coming to work and being there for your coworkers, I think... I think attendance and safety has really been the two things that we're trying to push together forward and, and make a culture shift. So yeah, I do start, I am seeing a very small shift in that, but we really only started to to unfold what we're, where we're going with this too. And I think we also have ways to incentivize with, with the points. We can see who are those people who don't have points and things like that. We also have team sense to see who are the people who aren't calling in. So we have a lot of more data around absences as a whole than what we had previously and a lot more visualization into the system. Yeah, I think I love that. I think um, an interesting thing that we talked about before was how you really want to support the employees that you have that are showing up to work and having that accountability not only helps support them more, um, it, you know, gives you a visual into those employees, again, that are showing up and maybe there's ways that you can continue to encourage that behavior and be able to connect with them more easily as well. Um, I think in terms of understanding um, really the response to a a points policy, when you decided to implement it a year ago, what was kind of the initial reaction or what have been some responses that you've gotten? There was definitely some resistance to start out. So we did it interestingly because we kind of started talking about it during negotiations with the union. We yeah. had the union stewards and, and the main rep at the table. And, and of course, your union stewards are typically going to be the employees who are the ones who aren't abusing it and showing up. So having conversations with them of like, we have this problem and they're really the employees who are covering for the other ones who aren't showing up. So they're the ones who, I don't say get abused, but they they're the ones who get abused in the situation or have to fill in. And so they want the accountability just as much as us. So I think when you really come down to it, to the, to the nitty gritty of it, what I think, and and for us, I think it opens a lot of doors and this is going to be our challenge in the South. We're going to have to have some of these conversations ahead of time so that we can get like the union stewards and some buy-in from the whole leadership team and things like that. So as we roll this out, it makes more sense. So One of the things I think was a huge advantage of pointing it out is I mentioned that in our contract, we have like a four incident system. So our four incidents could have been a performance space, attendance space, attendance space, performance space, and you're out. With a point system, it forces a separation. So we now in a way have those four progressives when it comes to like a performance side, but now we have attendance in its own thing. So in a way it actually gives employees more chances and it separates Mm -hmm. it out. So you can really identify those who are having an attendance issue from that perspective. So I think that was one that really got them on board. And I do think some of that like visualization of having clear expectations of where everyone stands and exactly how those work um, was really important to them. I feel like we got a little pushback on how many points. I feel like the union wanted us to have like a 10 point system. Mm. Um, I think that we, so our response to that was to try it at the eight points and see how it went and looking at the statistics and even looking at the statistics today, um, we've probably only terminated about maybe 30 to 40 people and our company goes from, so right now we're on our lower side of about like 720 employees and then we double during our campaign. So losing only 30 people with a very high turnover just for attendance. 
is pr pretty substantial in our world. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so you kind of touched a little bit about, upon like visibility, like being able to see into these absences and, or really being able to see into the points that people are accumulating. What to like in terms of team sense, what features or really aspects of team sense do you feel like have been most beneficial to supporting your points policy and attendance tracking in general? So before TeamSense, all of our points were sitting in an Excel spreadsheet. And the only way to get that is to go see the HR person that you have on staff at your facility and ask them. Um, there's also a delay at that point because we had all these paper forms going back and forth for the points. So now we have a way for people. So people can just text points into the TeamSense number and it gives them their balance right there. So I think that feature and just giving people the points at their fingertips just reinforces that accountability piece. And it was interesting, Sharon and I checked in after using it for not even like maybe a few weeks and there was like over 50 people who were looking at their points. And again, for our inner campaign time, that's a lot of people for less than half, you know, half of the company in this situation being on points. So I think that was huge. I think managers being able to have access to them again without having to go to HR. So just that, that individual access level, I think, is really huge. Um, and I know we're going to talk about some of the new features, and there's a lot in those new features, too, that I really enjoy as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I love hearing about sort of the accountability and, like, that employees are self-serving and being able to check their points whenever they want to instead of on the schedule that HR is available and, like, when they're already in the facility. So that that's awesome. That's exactly what we were what we were hoping to see when we launched those features. Awesome. Um, switching gears just a little bit, how do you measure the effectiveness of your points policy and how is TeamSense helping you get to your attendance tracking goals? So um, TeamSense was really awesome in the fact that I really, I feel like I engaged TeamSense at, right after the point we were rolling out points. And so I already had plans of what we were going to do and everything I felt just kind of fit together um more like a like a glove um Sharon can you ask me the question again I kind of lost my train of thought. yeah absolutely <laughs> how are you measuring the effectiveness of okay. the point policy in team sense? so so it was a lot of team sense and my implementation specialist that drove the metrics so what are the things that I want to see I think the biggest thing like I said is how do I reduce no call no shows that's Mm -hmm. The biggest thing, I, I don't want people to feel that it's okay to not come to work. And so I think that is one of the biggest metrics. Um, so now that we are at the year mark, at least from the points perspective, I can look and see what the points is doing. Um, I didn't really actually think about doing that in, <laughs> until this call. Um, but I was really thinking about doing it from the team sense perspective, because obviously we would look at team sense after we've been using team sense for a year and, and then see if those metrics reduce. But I think the points really play a role in that too. I think it's kind of like that double whammy. So I think I, I really would like to look at that data. So um, reducing no call, no shows, um, reducing terminations based off of attendance. So like saying like those, the people that have, been terminated based off of attendance, like those numbers are pretty reduced. Um, we do have probationary periods when it comes to our union contracts. So if people aren't showing up in their first 90 days, um, they will just get released. It's not necessarily always noticed that it's attendance at that point. So those will probably give us a little gray area um, to work with, but those are kind of really the main things I'm looking for is reducing the terminations to attendance and reducing the no call, no shows and actually getting people to show up. Um, as well as use their allowance time. So using their allowance time, the rates of which they use their allowance time is another metric in which I can pay attention to to see if I'm really shifting that culture change to showing up. Awesome. It sounds like no call, no show is a huge piece of heartburn for so many HR managers we talk to, um, you know, especially in manufacturing and logistics, like you mentioned, in what world can people just not show up and, and still have their job? So um, that's something that we hear a lot. And um, I think it's just a, a validation point I wanted to point out to you. If you are here, you are not alone. You, <laughs> everybody's also experiencing this as well. Um, so we obviously have people here today that are potentially considering a points attendance policy. Maybe they have one that exists and they're maybe reviewing it. 
or maybe they don't have one and they think, oh, maybe this does sound good. Um, what are some lessons you've learned or maybe some best practices that you would recommend to others um, if, if other organizations are really looking to implement a policy as well? One of the things we did is kind of like a powwow. So we got everybody together, um, like all the heads of the facilities and some of the executives and a lot of people had done points because they're all from different manufacturing companies and a lot of them were coming from those. So we actually pulled a bunch of different companies policies of people, like, cause all these um, employees had different experience with them. And we really sat down and talked through as a team, what these policies would look like for us. And we really made our own custom one from there. Um, I think you can make one from scratch with like, you know, just, just like a templated type thing. Um, but there was really some value in using other manufacturers policies. Like as you guys saw with ours being really extensive, it allowed us to look at those, those very different situations that we also run into. And we don't wanna have a lot of gray area. We're not a company who wants to, you know, we have your points fall off after 12 months, but we don't wanna just take points away for any, like just out of the blue. So we've really tried to structure this to be a very black and white policy with not a lot of gray so that we can really hold everyone to it and not start to blur the lines with it. So that was kind of the big piece for us. Yeah, you don't wanna have any sort of, uh, you wanna have human empathy, but no, favoritism or anything going on of the sort. And I think that's what's so important of having a policy and also making the policy easy to find for your employees too, I think is really critical as well. Uh, we've heard of people using something like Portal and TeamSense as an example to be able to show, hey, if you have questions about the policy or if you want to know about what our points attendance policy is, you can go here pretty easily and it's very self-serving. So I um, appreciate you sharing that. I know some people are just thinking, how do I even get started? So I think don't boil the ocean, you know, take a look at what's been out there. And, and I think it's also important that you listen to your employees that have the experience with point intense policies, seeing what they have been acclimated to, and that makes the transition much easier. So good job on y'all for doing that. Yeah. And I know that you guys will put my information out for people to connect with me. Um, I have no, like my policy is not a secret and I am willing to share it. So if you guys want to look at my full policy, I am more than willing to connect on a later basis and share that with anybody who wants to. That's Brittany, that is so awesome, honestly, because we, we've collected a lot of attendance policies in our research just because that's part of what's coming next for team sense. But it is, these things are not always public and they're very hard. It, it can be very hard to get a handle on what others are doing and like what's working well for them and what's not and what's just, what's been there because it's legacy or what's been there uh, or what was added because there was a specific use case that was not being fulfilled by an older policy. So that's a huge offer. Um, I hope people take you up on it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, no, seriously, thanks, Brittany, for that. And I think even just the ability to connect with you and feel like people have a community that they can lean in on is so helpful, too. So thank you for offering to connect with people. We really appreciate it. Um, OK, so I want to shift gears a little bit here. Uh, we do have a few questions coming in through Q&A, which is awesome. I want to make sure we have plenty of time for that at the end. Um, but Sharon, we talked, and actually Brittany is the one that teased this for us already, talking about new features with our points integration with TeamSense. Uh, would you like to show the audience what's coming up and what's new? And I can share screen and walk through kind of the points for you. Oh, sure. Yeah, if you want to share it. Yeah, that perfect. Works. Um, okay. I, sh I wish I had like a drum roll here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So TeamSense, for, for a while now, we have offered a points integration for connecting with your source of truth. And in our research around that and um, trying to understand what our customers wanted beyond being able to see attendance points, just like just the number in the system, we found that these are really the things that uh, our customers are looking for. So we, we want to create more transparency between um, employees and the organization so that everyone's looking at the same data. We want to increase employee accountability so employees know where they stand and are able to make better decisions. 
And ultimately, like Brittany was alluding to, the, the goal is to reduce no-call no-shows and ultimately absenteeism. So um, if you want to click to the next slide, Caroline, I've got a little build. Um, so what is new? And this is something that Brittany and her team have been previewing and sort of beta testing for us for the last couple months. Um, we have... Uh, we have implemented a, a sort of an augmentation to our previous points integration, which is in addition to just seeing the number of points, employees, this is the employee view, employees are now able to see where they stand in terms of the, the whole policy. So the policy being shown here is a 10 point policy. And when it's expanded, like it is here, you can see what those different thresholds are and what the, what the policy really means. So this is a pretty simple policy with just a late, unexcused and um, no call, no show for the different sort of point levels, but being able to see what, what sort of action or inaction determines the different points is really helpful at a glance. So this is the screen that's shown <clears throat> to employees before they call off, which is, <clears throat> which is when uh, it's most important for them to be making that decision. One moment. I was like, I'll take a sip of water on your behalf, Sharon. I'm good. And this is one of those features that I was going to point out. I really like. Um, so once you hit, they're at their points and they're calling in. It's now going to tell them that they have the potential to hit that discipline. And so now my employee has a heads up that they're going to do, be disciplined, and it's less of like a caught off guard situation. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you guys. I don't know why I'm losing my voice all of a sudden. This always happens to me. Um, the other piece for employees is in addition to when they're about to call off, seeing that screen. <clears throat> um, sorry. You're totally good. The other thing I really like about this is the thermometer. So when it pushes yeah. it to the side. So yeah. what, what we have right now in TeamSense outside of the beta is it'll tell you that you got the five points. So really, what does that mean without going to your portal and pulling the policy? So this really puts it all in one place and shows them that ticker of, of where they're going. And so I think this visual was one of the most exciting. <laughs> I'm a nerd, but I was very excited <laughs> about this and this visual for all of our employees. I would say you're talking to Sharon, who is a design nerd, so you're she's loving this right now. Yeah. That's true. We've we've had this conversation a couple of times. <laughs> Brittany and I have nerded out on where we started and where we ended up, and I I don't know. It warms my designer heart to to hear those things. Um, the other aspect here for employees is a proactive notification, which is this notification that you're seeing on the far left, where before an employee even calls off, they, uh, no matter, like without any action from them before, when they are one point away from a threshold, they receive this notification saying, hey, heads up, you're about to get to this point. And from our beta conversations, we've heard that these have been really useful in ways that maybe we didn't even predict, um, where in one case, we heard that an employee's points had been incorrectly entered. And so they got this notification. They're like, wait a second, um, that's not how many points I should have. And because they had the data, they were able to go to the HR team and quickly resolve it. Whereas before, what would have happened is they would have not known what their points were until they hit a threshold. And then we're having a much more serious conversation about what about why we're at the threshold and not having it at a time where you know tensions are a little bit lower. Um, the last piece, Caroline, if you give it one more click. Um, is for team leaders and admins. So this functionality that we're that we're talking about and we're releasing soon is primarily on the employee side, but we also want to make it easier for team leaders and admins to see the same information too. So you can see here in the um, attendance log, you are able to see the employee's points on the day that they call off and on their profile, it's displayed with that thermometer kind of view as well. So this is hopefully helping um, helping make that more obvious. And also for HR teams, really the goal is to have less manual work for the HR team where Brittany was mentioning earlier that previously the, the on-site representatives were having all these questions from their team about how many points do I have? What about today? And if an employee is able to see it before they call off and they can actually also text points to TeamSense and get their balance right back immediately. So they don't have to be um, on site. They don't have to interact with HR, which is great if they're, especially if their first language is in English. 
Um, and so all of that is making it a little bit more transparent and hopefully increasing accountability for employees and making everybody's lives a little bit easier. I love it. So it's, thanks for like giving this quick little overview demo. Super helpful to see. And obviously, Brittany, we appreciate your two cents too, since you have helped us test this feature. So thank you so much again for participating in that. Really, your feedback has been so critical in helping us make it better. So thanks for that. Um, we have our Q&A is popping off, so we should probably jump into it. And we have 15 minutes left, so that's perfect because we'll get through everything here as best as we can. Um, let's jump in if y'all are ready. Actually, hold on before we jump in. Sorry. I like to always tease for next week's webinar. So, um, selfishly, I'll tease this first. So, um, join Sarah and I, some of y'all who are familiar with working with Sarah, she's our senior customer success manager here at TeamSense. She is incredible. And her and I are talking about really some strategies around reducing employee turnover. It's going to be a really great conversation topic. Uh, again, come with questions. We'll get into the details of um, some strategies that we're familiar with, but obviously would love to hear your ideas too. Okay, let's hop into our Q&A and I'm going to stop sharing screen here too, so we can just get everybody's faces again. Okay, we have Christina has asked this question. So uh, how do you structure the point drop off time, like 12 months? Typically, there are two options, one on the date accrued or two on the date of disciplinary action. Um, which one did you pick and why? Or if any others, please share. In our situation, we do date of the incident for consistency um, and not necessarily date of the discipline. Um, we do have like a window of discipline with our union contracts um, of which we can issue that discipline. So we're kind of within a time frame from that. So um, it also works really well when you have team sense in like the call ins too, because they kind of start to correlate. Not, the no call no shows don't because they're not calling into team sense. But for a lot of those, they start to correlate. And what's really cool is our team sense system has a 12 month drop off too. And so that actually, like the incidents almost start to align with our points from that perspective. And so that's part of the logic and why we went that direction. But I think that you could safely do both. Got it. Okay. Hopefully that answered your question, Christina. If you have more, let us know. Um, okay, Cassie. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct, Cassie, by the way. Casey or Cassie. I'll connect with you later to clarify. Uh, we have a union manufacturing environment too, but luckily, and this is actually good because I had questions for you too, Brittany, about unions, uh, but luckily we don't have attendance in our contract. What was the biggest challenge for your employee population when you rolled it out? Did they have trouble with the concept of using their cell phone to call or text in? Our employees currently call in now and just leave a voice message. It's a great question. Okay. That's a great question. And we have, with our population, we have it all across the board um, as far as literacy, different languages, the, the whole gamut. Um, we have not gotten pushback as far as phones because they still have the ability to call in. I am really pushing text messaging more so because it's very clear versus when they're calling in, there's an IVR. So there, there is a translation basically. And so um, it's just, here's like a kind of little fun thing. And one of my employees I know is on this call. So she's going to get a kick out of this. So <laughs> um, this one guy called it. He was like, our, he was just my habitual example of someone and, and like insights tells you who calls in the most. So I could see that this guy was like a call and he would use the IVR. So it would say like, he would just call in sick, but it would say six or sick. And one time he said he was thick and I was all, oh, he's thick. <laughs> and and it's, you, I mean, it's obvious. So you, you can really tell like what they are because they're really very close together. Um, and it also matches with his selections as he's going through his prompts. Um, but I do think the texting is significantly nicer flowing and, and very easy to read and they have the ability to write everything in and there's no like cutoffs and timings and things like that. So there was a little bit of a shift in that, but they are more than welcome to call. They can call from any phone, they can call from any landline. So that's my backup situation. Um, and so I haven't had a lot of issues there. They were calling into like our control rooms before and getting an employee or leaving a voicemail. So we've kind of taken some of the human aspect out of that piece of it. Um, 
And that was crucial. And actually, that's actually a good thing that we added because we would then have somebody on a radio. And of course, I'm going to use a ridiculous situation. And it would be like, Caroline has the sniffles. And then it's like, oh, don't be around Caroline, you know, like that type of like <laughs> HIPAA protected information that you don't want yeah. going across the radio type of thing. So it really is starting to control where things are for each people. Um, I think with the union, I think a lot of what helped us is having that pre-meeting with the union representatives first. We don't always work cohesively from that perspective, but this is a situation where getting their buy-in first was crucial to getting them to go forward with it. And in the South, they're going to want to take it to a vote since it is in the contract. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to do something very similar. We're going to sit down with all those UN union stewards, talk through all of their concerns because their concerns are real, but I can also see where this advantages them. So I want to show them that advantage before they kind of make their, their, I guess their stance. And then when we go to roll it out, if that's what we're going to do or if they vote it in, then they're there to support us as the company. Got it. Sorry, that was a long-winded one. <laughs> no, that was great. And thank you so much, Casey. I got your name. Uh, thanks, Casey, for asking it. Uh, we really appreciate it. Oh, gosh. Okay, more questions coming in. This is great. Um, let's get some quick ones real quick that I know we can answer pretty quickly. Um, this is coming from Erica. Is the app in English only? No. Um, TeamSense has more than 20 different translations, and it depends on what your company needs but we have i would i would say we're able to cover all of the all the languages needed for our customers um Brittany, do you guys do you guys have any translations today we have spanish speaking um in only one of our facilities and so everything is basically translated so if that person texts in everything's in spanish everything also translates for me as well um so i can see everything on there, we don't have a lot of Spanish speakers, so it's a very small portion of our population and that just English and Spanish are the two we have. Yeah, so the employee experience is all in their native language or in their preferred language, which is awesome, especially if you don't have an HR team that speaks all of those languages, the employee is able to see it in their language and the HR team is able to see, see everything in English, obviously. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's uh, over definitely over 20 languages, too, that TeamSense supports. So it's pretty robust. Um, so yeah, thanks for giving an example. Um, okay, here's another one. Um, is the employee points warning notification sent using a TeamSense text or email or both? Yeah, that's that's a great question. That is another one that is set by the employee's preference. And so the vast majority are sent via text message, but often we will see really more on the supervisor or manager side, the preference being email sometimes over text message. But for employees, the vast majority of communication is via text. But if they prefer email, that's also available. Well, cool. thanks for answering that. Okay, question from Erica real quick. Yeah. How did the points integrate to TeamSense? Yeah, that's a great question. So TeamSense is not the not the system of record for your points. Your points are being calculated or determined elsewhere by business logic and by human intervention, usually with your supervisors and HR team, right? So we are taking that information and displaying it so that it is visible in the TeamSense admin app and also visible to employees. So we are doing that in a few different ways, depending on how your systems are set up. Um, some of them are through an Excel sheet or a Google sheet. Others are through an HRIS. It really depends on where your source of truth for points is. Um, but we, we work with all of those. And to add to my nerdiness, <laughs> um, so our payroll system is ADP. Um, we are working on integrating TeamSense with ADP. We have part of the integration turned on and we like to go farther with that. But in this journey, we turned on our API for ADP and um, that gives my IT team the ability to build any API they want. So we're actually going to pull data between what we have in TeamSense for call offs, what we have in ADP, and we are gonna build an API that's going to self-calculate everything from logic. Um, so I'm really excited to move in that direction. Um, because we have everything we need in the two systems. And and I think the one thing to just give people a visual, because I don't think I could see it at first, is that no call, no show. Like 
you have to call in TeamSense to say you're not showing up. If you're a no-call, no-show, you didn't call. So how is that information in the TeamSense? It's not. It's in your other system of record. And so we're going to build an API that brings those two things together. Um, I have a pretty robust IT team that is really excited about APIs like I am. So that works really well. Um, and that's kind of our workaround. But right now we do operate off of basically like a spreadsheet. So my two different HR people at each of the facilities are basically those spreadsheets are just talking to their tracking spreadsheets and it's updated on a nightly basis for us in our situation. I love it. I love the nerdiness. Always be nerdy. Yeah, me too. I I would say, Brittany, you are very much on the cutting edge of this, of like of the people that I talk to regularly. You are very like it's very close to my heart. I I love when you tell me about how how much you've got going on in the IT side and well, we're in AI that's... world. It can automate everything. Like why aren't we automating everything? <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, we have time for maybe two more questions. Okay, we'll try to get through them quick. Um, all right, there seems to be a growing set of conversations about how point systems are perceived as negative and punitive and trying to incentivize attendance in more positive ways. Along with fostering accountability and cultural changes is presenting the point system in a more positive way, a conversation that's happening at Western Sugar. And if so... How are you doing this? That is a really good question. That is a good one. I think that's kind of the goal is like, how do we put it in that positive way? And how do we get in front of the teams to help support? And I think a lot of it is feeding, like surveys is probably a good suggestion. I have my ear to the ground with a lot of my staff. So we've already started to hear the rumblings. And obviously I got some of the rumblings in the first time around. So I kind of know what I'm going into. And I'm a big planner. So I'll really start to, you know, ask my HR staff what they're hearing and those types of stuff leading into it. Cause there has, we've been talking about this for a couple of months. And so there already has been grumbling and we have one union steward who's like, no, there's no way I'm going to support it. Well, that's cool. I just want to know a little bit more as to why that is to come mm -hmm. into it. Um, I can see how the points are punitive, but we're more punitive with our four, like in our situation with our four, just our four incident situation. So we think it makes it less punitive for the person in a way for it's like, it's not just four incidents. We've now like tripled your incidents because you can have eight attendance incidents and then these other four performance or whatever types of incidents over here. And so I think telling that story has been big too of like, we're giving them more chances with more visualization. And I think that's the piece. I also think there is something in incentivizing those people who have the good in, in attendance, which I think team sense is giving me that data to kind of start to point out who those people are. Um, and then I can decide how I want to do that. So I think that's an expansion for us because I think this is a huge culture shift. And, and as we all know, especially most of us in the HR world is change is a long process. And so this is just the first step for us. Um, so this is, this is going to be a long-term thing for me and really each of our rollouts in the different unions and sites will be a learning curve and I, I continue to learn more each time. Yeah. I love you talking about that perfect streak feature, especially Brittany, like being able to say like not only uh, being able to use an attendance policy for negative implications, but also being able to see like who's showing up every day and doing doing the job and like doing it consistently and being able to reward them. Um, that's that's something that we we think a lot about too, is like keeping that balance between positive and negative. So I love that. Yeah, I think the transparency it helps promote the accountability piece. I think, um, at least for me, if I know where I stand, then I'm going to take that on. It's on me to really manage that. I think you gave a good example of like, you know, if I just kind of, you know, goofed off work, didn't show up, accumulate all these points, and then all of a sudden I have an emergency you know, that's kind of on me because I really was neglecting my attendance stance. And then all of a sudden if an emergency pops up, then yikes, you're, you're kind of out of points, right? So I think there's kind of accountability on both sides and you still allow for that human empathy side too. You know, you've reviewed things and I think that's also- And finding that point for like that point for you, like that threshold of where it's enough that it's an, a normal amount of people should be using their allowance time the right way and not the abuse. And so we're trying to just cut down the abuse slightly. 
Yeah. No more abuse. We've had enough. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, it's 11.15. I think we could probably talk for another hour. Um, but this has been so fantastic, Brittany. We really appreciate you joining us today. It's been really great to learn more about how y'all have implemented your policy, what's working, and really give that advice to people that joined. I think this is the most questions we've ever had in a webinar. So this is amazing. Thank you so much for everyone that joined us today and asked questions. I hope it was helpful. Again, we'll send out the recording to the webinar if you want to revisit the content. Uh, we can also share, hopefully, Brittany, your LinkedIn account if you want to connect with her directly. Take a look at their attendance policy, too, or points attendance policy as well, since she offered it up. But um, wow, this has been so fun. Thanks so much again to Sharon for showing our new product feature. I know we're really excited about it. So, okay. Well, hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Thanks again to everyone that joined us and we'll see you next week. Y'all take care. Thank you, Caroline. Thanks, Brittany. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.